Growing up, things were different. You know, we had our neighbors who were checking on us. We had more, the community felt more community, whereas that's what we're trying to reinvent that type of feel with mentoring. Mm -hmm. So young people feel like, you know, the person who lives down the street or in another city is still connected to them in some way through mentoring. This is Hourglass, the podcast for United Way of King County in Seattle. Up next, Mentorship Program Directors Don and Hazel Cameron, who will tell us how they've dedicated their time to helping young men of color succeed in school and in life. I'm your host, Joe Burris. Thanks for tuning in. The 2023 University of Washington football team staged one of the greatest campaigns in program history, going undefeated in the regular season and marching all the way to the NCAA Division I National Championship, where the Huskies lost to top-ranked Michigan. Yet amid all the pressures of juggling classes, exams, travel, campus life, and a steady stream of Pac-12 opponents eager to knock them off, members of the UW football team found time each week to serve as mentors at the 4C Coalition, a nonprofit organization that has been connecting area youth to role models for more than 20 years. The 4C Coalition was launched after church representatives, educators, social agency workers, and mentor program representatives gathered at the Seattle Juvenile Rehabilitation Administration to discuss developing a mentor program for local youth. One of those agency workers was Hazel Cameron, who now serves as 4C Coalition's director. She has seen the organization go from meeting in church basements during its first five years to providing group mentoring, one-on-one -on -one mentoring, tutoring, and volunteer opportunities. Students who participate in the 4C Coalition are matched with trained mentors who provide support, encouragement, friendship, and counsel. Hazel says that 4C's goal is to ensure youth come through the program and graduate from high school while avoiding gangs, violence, addiction, and prison, and then go to college, find meaningful employment, and live productive lives. 4C is the acronym for Clergy Community Children Youth Coalition. Uh, we are a mentoring program that provides mentoring services for youth in King County. Um, our origin is rooted in social services, education, and um, community. We are a grassroots organization, and which excites me the most is that we were founded in 1999 by clergy community um, mentoring organization. There were about 35 of us who were the final uh, founding group of the 4C Coalition. And, and, and the reason I call it a grassroots because we started just that way as um, organizations of people coming together with a great need to look at the disproportionate number of Black kids, especially Black boys, that were incarcerated in our juvenile justice system across King County and across the state. Um, at the time, I worked at JRA mentoring program. I ran the mentoring program at Juvenile Rehabilitation Administration, which is a state organization. And part of my job was going out into the community to recruit mentors. And what better place to find mentors than in the Black churches? For members of the UW football team, mentoring at 4C Coalition each year is as common as spring practice. The Huskies are among many organizations who laud and support 4C's efforts. United Way of King County has funded 4C Coalition since 2010, supporting activities that keep youth connected to their schools, and their communities. We put out the call to um, for our first group mentoring session at Denny Middle School, which was probably about 10, 10 years ago. Um, uh, the principal, Mr. Clark, amazing principal, who really advocated and supported our work, um, allowed us to come into school um, and do our programs during school hours. Initially, we were after school, but he saw the benefit to these young people that he gave us during school hours. They slotted out some time for us. In 2008, Hazel's husband, Don Cameron, launched the Seattle Cares Mentoring Movement, the local branch of the National Cares Mentoring Movement that was founded in 2005 following Hurricane Katrina. 
Seattle Cares is one of 50 nationwide cares movements that mentor young girls and boys of color. I would venture to say that our primary focus is recruiting uh, mentors, particularly black mentors, both men and women, um, to to work with mentoring organizations that might be struggling to recruit them. Um, and additionally, I mean, initially we started off as just a recruitment vehicle, but we realized that there was more that we had to do. So that's when we began to do direct service um, and really focus on doing that. But uh, we really tried to do the best we could to help support the 4C Coalition because they were working with a lot of um, um, kids from King County a Juvenile Court. So we helped recruit a lot of those mentors to work with them. We had um, they actually created the campaign called Mentor Sunday. We just partnered with them on that on that campaign, and the Mentor Sunday was a great opportunity to galvanize uh, the faith community. And I mean, there were some summers that we recruited over close to six hundred mentors uh, in our Mentor Sunday campaigns. When Seattle Cares started doing direct service. They actually have a program with the curriculum. We were working from a curriculum, but we were pulling it from um, uh, different programs. We were pulling pen and it pencil. Pen and pencil, which is um, pen and pencil stands for give the kid um, the pencil for education, and or either they were in it in the penitentiary. Oh, wow. Educate those children. Oh, and that's a national okay. curriculum that was funded through okay. the uh, Association of. Um, after who was the association? Oh, it was OJJDP. Oh, OJJDP was the first funder of that, and so we did that. <coughs> and um, the the seven the habits seven habits of of, of teens highly effective teens uh, highly effective teens. We would use their curriculum, different curriculum. So when Seattle Cares came on board, they had their own curriculum called The Rising, mm-hmm. which just came out of a book called A New Way Forward: What's Hurting Black America. Huh. And this book was written by Brain Trust of the sixty experts from across the country, with Susan Altel, a former editor of Essence magazine, being the 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 lead, the CEO of National Cares, which Seattle Cares is the affiliate, one of fifty eight affiliates. And um, so we um, have used that curriculum. And when Seattle Cares came on board, we decided, you know, this is a fantastic curriculum, and it's a thirty six week curriculum. Let's adopt it and start using that curriculum for our children. Oh. And it consists of 10 pillars, mm-hmm. and the pillars go from spirituality, prosperity, health and wellness, relationship building. I'm just naming a few. Mm-hmm. But mm-hmm. we take each of those pillars and covenant. How do you build a covenant with each other? And we use that as a curriculum in our classroom sessions. The 4C Coalition partners with King County Superior Court via the court's Best Starts for Kids program which funds community organizations, nonprofits, school districts, and tribal organizations to achieve health and well-being for children, families, and communities. 4C's program with the UW football team is through Montlake Futures, an organization that supports the missions of nonprofit organizations by developing educational experiences for UW student-athletes at those organizations. They have educated these young people about being careful about what they put on Instagram or what they put on TikTok, whatever they, whatever venue, uh, social media um, app they use. Be careful what you put out there about yourself, but you can't take it back. Right. It's going to be there and it's going to follow you and you want to be careful. Among the members of the UW football team that served as mentors last year was Michael Penix, a Heisman Trophy finalist that is rated as one of the top signal callers in this year's NFL draft. Pinnock says that mentoring to him is paying forward what his father did for him and other young men while growing up in his Tampa, Florida neighborhood. Before I became a mentor and started, you know, inspiring these kids, you know, I had no idea, you know, how much, you know, somebody above, um, somebody that's older than you can grab the attention of the youth. You know, um, at my age, it was times where, you know, I, I didn't want to listen to, you know, people older than me. And if they weren't like my parents or my family and stuff like that, but like to see to see the youth, you know, just you know gravitating to uh, to us and you know just truly taking in what we're saying and truly being inspired by that, you know, um, I, I had no idea like it was to the level that it is. Penix and other members of the UW football team took the mentees on field trips to venues such as the Wow Gallery. They engaged in wrenching discussion topics such as deaths in the family and took part in rites of passage ceremonies at the Northwest African American Museum. But Don says there's one thing they didn't do much of. 
we don't talk about, you know, who you guys are going to beat Oregon this week or WSU is we talk about just life challenges and uh, football. Some week, I mean, sometimes I wish we had talked a little bit more about it, but, <laughs> but, you know, it's, it was, it just, it was a natural conversation that we just talked about life and they were, they, they did a great job, um, um, and mentors. I mean, when you think about the guys that we had in that group, we <laughs> yeah. had the whole team captains. Right. We had Zion. We had right. Eddie. We had Mike. I mean, you know, I mean, we had we have we've been so fortunate to have so many great guys over here. You know, Vita Vea, um, Joe Tryon, John Ross, Dante Pettis. I mean, I can go on. It's, it must have been about eighty of them that had gone to our program over the last seven seven years, and. They all have been really high character guys, and um, you know, it's just been great role models. Uh, they epitomize what really great mentors are, because they didn't want to disappoint. How how could you want to disappoint a young person that you're coming to talk to on a Monday, and you go do something that you'll regret on a Saturday or Friday, right? So they realized that you know, hey, they have a certain standard that they they have to maintain, Ooh. and I think it had a lot to do how well they did. Members of the UW football team said that a few of the mentees have impacted them as well, including Kenny Wedrago, a Seattle Prep 11th grader who has been part of 4C Coalition since middle school. Last year, Kenny served as a constituent communications intern for the mayor of Seattle's office and is currently an intern at the Intercommunity Peace and Justice Center. As a middle schooler, Kenny was part of a 4C coalition project called Building a Perfect City, which enlisted Denny and Meany middle school students to probe what it would take to make Seattle a better city in areas such as public safety and housing. Kenny and others who participated in Building a Perfect City presented their findings in a workshop at the Martin Luther King Day rally in March at Garfield High School. Hear Kenny speak about what he wants to see in a better Seattle, and you have to admit that it sounds similar to what most of us want. Um, I define public safety as, like, number one, just being able to feel physically safe in whatever environment you're in, Um, being able to, you know, not be exposed to drugs, you know, as you take public transit and such. Um, and also, like, you know, like bringing down, like, you know, things like shootings and such. And to make sure that police responses are actually like the police actually respond and look into incidents and try to prevent the next incident from happening. But uh, also making sure that there's not over policing and that people feel safe with their law enforcement too. Hazel and Don's mentoring programs have given them insight into what many young people face, particularly at a time when Seattle is struggling with high rates of violence among teens rarely seen in recent years. I think the pandemic really kind of changed things in a huge way. Mm -hmm. Um, I think mentoring was different um, prior to the pandemic and is forever changed forever after it, Um, primarily because for at least three years, kids were not in classrooms. They weren't building their social skills, their communication skills. And um, those are years that we can never get back. So um, our program was in school, as as Hazel mentioned, we were in schools on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And the pandemic hit, uh, we thought, you know, I remember the, the superintendent of school said, we got to be closed for two weeks so we can clean the schools up and we're going to be coming back. Well, we didn't get back for it until about two and a half years later. Right, right. So, um, so it really kind of, kind of caught everybody off guard because we had never experienced anything like that. So we just felt like we needed to, we couldn't just abandon the kids and their families, you know. We, we couldn't let a pandemic just in, upend everything for us. We had built a lot over those years. We wanted to keep the momentum. So we found a local nonprofit that gave us about 40 computers, and we we gave those computers out uh, we had um, Zoom uh, uh, apps uh, loaded on those computers. Um, we 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 jump started our program in about three weeks. And you know what I want to add too is we mm-hmm. both are from other places. Right. I'm from on the East Coast, Washington D.C. He's from Louisiana, Monroe. Right. And um, I think growing up, things were different. You know, we had our neighbors who were checking on us. We had more the community 
felt more community, whereas that's what we're trying to reinvent that type of feel with mentoring. Mm -hmm. So young people feel like, you know, the person who lives down the street or in another city is still connected to them in some way through mentoring. But, you know, we're living in so many different times. We're trying to keep up with it ourselves (laughs) in our work of identifying what has changed. And when we do our mentor trainings, that's one of the questions we ask our mentors, potential mentors. We take them on a journey we asked them to think back when you were a teenager. What was it like? Who was there for you? Did you have friends? Did you have, were you popular? Were you an athlete? What did you do? <laughs> and how did you manage to not end up in the justice system? Or, and a lot of these people who come to our training said, hey, I was in the justice system when I was a teenager. Okay. Or I did do this wrong. I made mistakes. And so, and that's another avenue that it lets these young people and men, Young people know that these people are not just because they have a job, they're working, they have cars and home. It doesn't mean they didn't make mistakes when they were growing up. Right. And that's the power I think of mentoring, too. It's not surprising that Hazel said that mentorship program facilitators need support, too. She said she's found that support through United Way of King County's Racial Equity Coalition, a group of 14 organizations that create communities of belonging for youth of color offering after-school programs that celebrate their cultural identities. The Racial Equity or a Coalition, um, I've had more fun working with a group of nonprofits than ever wow. in a collaborative way. Wow. Because we do honor each other. We It's something should be duplicated because it ha- I have not seen it in all the years. I've been in this work for over 20 years. I work with many collaborative nations and organizations, but the, the REC or Racial Equity Coalition, we have been able to, you know, have the deeper conversations, um, put our thoughts on the table, being open, being willing to share whatever is bothering you and you want to change. We've been able to have those conversations and share with one another in a way I have not seen since I've lived here in um, Seattle and worked in King County. To learn more about the 4C Coalition, log on to the4ccoalition.org. To learn more about the Seattle Cares Mentoring Movement, log on to Seattle Cares Mentoring. United Way of King County partners with local organizations to help keep our neighbors housed through rental assistance. Those partners include the St. Stephen Housing Association, a Renton-based organization that provides housing and support services to families experiencing homelessness. St. Stephen Housing Association began in 1989 when parishioners at St. Stephen the Martyr Catholic Parish chose to respond to the growing number of families experiencing homelessness in their community. In 2020, St. Stephen Housing Association partnered with the county and United Way as part of the Eviction, Prevention, and Rental Assistance Program, providing desperately needed assistance to households facing eviction. Since then, The organization has assisted more than 2,000 households with rental assistance to stay in their homes. As the federal assistance program began winding down last year, the St. Stephen Housing Association established a rental assistance program for households in South King County. They continue to serve those households to this day. For more information, log on to ststephenhousing.org. United Way invites you to join our virtual event, Conversations for Change, Equity, and Education, on February 29th at 1145 a.m. Take part in this interactive session with Shomari Jones, Director of Equity and Engagement for Bellevue Schools, and Gordon McHenry, Jr., President and CEO of United Way of King County. The two will explore aspects shaping the future of education equity. For more information, log on to uwkc.org slash events. At United Way of King County, we are working side by side with communities to build an equitable future for everyone. Our Glass United Way is a podcast that highlights how we and our partners spend time making a difference in our communities. Our work is made possible by the generous donations from people like you. 
please send comments and suggestions about our podcast to hourglassunitedway at gmail.com. To learn more about our work or to support United Way, log on to uwkc.org. I'm your host, Joe Burris. Thanks for listening. Until next time.